Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Sid Meier's Civilization VI in our Eight Ages of Khmer series. So we are in episode 22. It's turn 292, 1941 AD. Things are going pretty smoothly, aside from the fact that we had an uh, archaeologist randomly disappear for no good reason last episode. Aside from that, we're back to uh, Civilization VI, which is nice. So I am currently looking at different options for purchasing stuff with faith. Don't have a ton of them at the moment because I'm almost out of faith, but I can go ahead and get a bank going in Leeds, which I'm going to do because we need to keep our gold income up. All right, missionaries. I just built a, a couple of missionaries, not a bunch of missionaries, but a couple, and we're going to send them into enemy territory so that they can die. No, seriously, that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah, you're going to come all the way over here. Nice long runtime. And Sere, this is our... Um, Quartermaster. So now that we have a quartermaster in position, let's see. If I want to have you counter spy, where would be the best spot? I would say probably the market, because then you could guard all of this. You wouldn't be able to guard the university, but you could guard a lot. So we wouldn't be protecting our knowledge or our great works, but we. Uh, see, do I want to protect my production? Do I want to protect my money? Protect my military? Or do I want to protect. I think I'd rather put them in the culture district, actually. Protect this stuff. Let's do that. You counter spy there. So this protects not only the culture zone, but the, um, the culture district, but the science district and the holy site as well. Missionary, where are you going? Yeah, you come over here too. That's fine. And I can probably train another one, can't I? Yep, let's do it. We need a lot of relics. All right, so this knight has been hanging out for a while. Let's just put them in Nagarjayosity, and then the horsemen. Okay, so the horsemen upgrades the cavalry, and we don't have that many horsemen. There, there are weird cavalry tracks, because there's light cavalry and heavy cavalry, and the horseman is like an ancient unit, and it just now got its first upgrade. It's weird. Um, I could go ahead and build a niter mine right now and get this boost towards rifling, so let's do that. That'll help us finish that a lot sooner. I was watching uh, just yesterday, well, for you guys it would have been two days ago, the latest uh, stream on Rise and Fall, and Ed was using the boosts very effectively in um, going from tech to tech, and that's not a style that I've really embraced in Civ 6, Civ 6 yet, but seeing it in action for the first time in that stream um, kind of opened my eyes a little bit, so I'm going to play around with that a little bit more um, and see if I can't uh, benefit from focusing a little bit more on that. It's not that I've completely ignored the boosts in the past, but like really strategically using them uh, to get as much progress out of stuff as you can is uh, is useful. Let's go ahead and build a shipyard in Bavapura. Meanwhile, this missionary, again, we're just sending them... ...into harm's way, basically. Where are you going? Yeah, you're going all the way over here to Bradford, near where that uh, archaeologist mysteriously disappeared. Please don't have yourself mysteriously disappear either, please. Thank you. Uh, you are our cat burglar. You can steal another great work. Yeah, let's steal another great work. Just do it. Keep taking him. That's what gives Congo his power, so might as well take it from him. All right, there's that Niter Mine. Our knowledge of rifling has advanced considerably. We're now one turn away from that, and also one turn away from conservation, so... That'd be nice. Again, once we finish conservation, we're going to have a couple more envoys, which is the reason we're going for that right now. All right, this knight can just chill out. And we're building another archaeologist in Nagata Geosity. Yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? I'm going to be occupying all of your cities before long, Victoria. So you, uh... Or technically, I am occupying all of your cities. Shut up, Harold. Because... The only city you have is Preslav, which is a city-state that you invaded and conquered, so I actually occupy all of your cities, Vicky. Apples, how about them? Bolt actions speak louder than words. Okay, so now we're moving towards steel, which is quite nice. All tiles in our, tiles in our civilization gain plus two appeal. Why would I want that, you wonder? Why ever would I want that? Well... When you look at our Pantheon, we get plus one faith from tiles with charming or better appeal, so we'll actually get a lot more appeal 
if we can get the Eiffel Tower built. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try to build the Eiffel Tower. That's been the focus since the beginning. And hey, I can go ahead and research uh, cultural heritage, but I'm not going to because I'd rather go straight for mobilization. And I'm going to beeline that. We are, it looks like now, 10 turns away from it. So these turn counts have gone down. That's nice. But once we have that finished, we will be able to train up armies. And then we will definitely be attacking Congo. Three more turns and our gold per turn bonus from him will be up. I may wait, though, until I have those armies just so that my victories can be as assured as possible. All things considered. So let's go ahead and buy this military academy in London. Those are basically for the instant production boosts. Um, Theater Square, probably a good idea. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'll put it here. Oh, wow. Five envoys. Very nice. Not just three, but five. So... Almost expecting five. That's pretty nice. We could straight up take Kumasi. Right now. Also, who's competing with me for Auckland? Oh, just no one but me. Oh, interesting. All right. Well, I'm not worried about losing Auckland then. I am a little bit worried about losing Cobble and Valletta. So maybe I'll just reinforce them. Are there any other suzerain bonuses that would be handy for me to have? Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Stockholm was the one that I was going to try and work towards, wasn't it? You know what? Yeah. Let's pile all of those new envoys into Stockholm and see if we can't take Stockholm away because that extra great person her type? Yep, I remember now. I wanted that, and I still want it. Glad I spotted that before I made a decision. Okay, so we're going to keep moving this direction with our missionaries. Really just, again, looking for religious units. Um, I guess we're not going to find any here, but we might find some in Harold Hadrada's territory. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, we built the Niter Mine, that's good. We've got the Gold Mine, that's also good. Still got two builds left with this guy. Let's go ahead and actually improve stuff around Nagata Geosity. Because the, the thing about that Niter Mine is that that was purely for that boost. It's not going to be useful to any cities. It's too far away. It's a useless Niter Mine aside from getting the boost that we needed with it, unfortunately. So it's kind of a wasted build charge when you consider why we were building that builder. God, the border colors between Demi Indonesia and Norway are so similar. This. Shut up, Alexander. Um... You just get to a point in Civ 6 when the, the denouncements get obnoxious. I really hope at some point in the future they address that either officially or through a mod. There might already be a mod. Um, but I just... The way the game handles them right now, it just... They, they are annoying. They, they, aren't, they are not immersive. Uh, after a while, they are simply annoying. Let's see. Bimeyapura. Stock exchange. Yes. Also, let's take a look at great people and see if we are in competition for anyone, really. Not... I mean, we're going to get the next great artist, which is nice. We might get the next great merchant. And that's actually a pretty nice one, Melita Bentz. I'll have to keep an eye on it next turn. I'll go back and look again when we have more, a little bit more faith to spend, because we have an opportunity maybe to get some great people with the faith that we have. Uh, Liverpool, you could probably benefit from a factor, but you could also benefit from a, fact, from a theater square, because we're, you know, we need as many archaeologists as we can handle. So, how's about we... Hmm. Hmm. This is a tough decision. We're going to put you right here. There we go. Okay, not going to spend any gold because in one more turn I'll be able to buy that factory. But I will go ahead and start building a shrine in Amendrapura. And we have a new religion. Hang on. What can you do for me? Plus two gold for each city. Following this religion, missionaries and apostles are 30% cheaper to produce. All world wonders provide plus four faith. Okay, that's not that great. Actually, so we're going to be converting that city, definitely. I mean, we're going to convert all of our cities again, but um, I'd like to see what kind of benefits I can get from a religion before I do that. As a rule, I like to do that.
Still exploring the top of the map here, uncovering that last little area. And when we sail here, it looks like we might be able to get above Germany's borders a little bit. That'll be some of the last of the fog of war, I think, that we're, we really have access to, because the rest of it is uh, inland. Or within Indonesia's borders. It's not inland, but I mean, you can tell their borders are way out into the water. That's another small thing. It's, it's not related to what I just mentioned a moment ago, but that's another thing I hope they tweak in future versions of Civ 6. The borders aren't like they are in 5, where you only see the borders on the minimap as they are on the land. So this is not actually the edge of the continent. This is the edge of our border, even going out into the sea. See this little jutting edge here? That's the part going out in the water. That's I want to see on the minimap the border of our land and maybe have a slightly different color somehow for the water. But um, right now, it's just a little bit misleading when you look at it. You have to realize that that's what you're looking at. Otherwise, the map can throw you off. Okay, so Angkor Thom, let's buy your factory. Unfortunately, that did not help the Venetian arsenal even a little bit, but it is giving a production bonus to some nearby cities, perhaps. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? I can. Uh, I did say that I was going to check on great people, so let's do that. Hmm. Yeah, I think Macedon's going to get the next one. There's a chance we'll get that great merchant. We'll see. Great profits are all gone. I knew that. Yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it. I'm not going to spend any faith right now because I, I do want to kind of keep an eye on what I might be able to do great people-wise. So instead, how about we... You know what? Let's train up some additional... Um, let's train up some additional cavalry because eventually we're going to need them to be tanks. So may as well make them cavalry now. We're two turns away from urbanization, which means we, we are very soon to start researching our technologies, which will lead... Oh, good. Now we can have some religious combat. It's our technologies and our civics that will lead us to uh, armies, which we've been waiting for for a while. God, it's so nice that they have their own movement layer now. I love it. I love every single bit of it. It making me happy. So... There's a little bit of a stutter right now, and I'm not sure why. This doesn't stop. This has happened before, and I think in this series. Um, I wonder if something's running in the background right now. Hold on. No. Didn't see anything running in the background. I'll have to check when I am done with this. Maybe if I put um, Civ 6 on, on a bit higher priority processor-wise, that will be less of an issue. But I don't want recording to be a problem either, so... We'll play with it. It hasn't happened in, in past Civ recordings. It's only in the fall update, so I'm tempted to think it's game-related. Ten turns away, by the way, from both of these new theater squares. That's going to be nice. Congo's trading with Sumeria. Let's do a quick check on victory progress. Culture-wise, they're climbing, but again, that number's climbing too, so they're technically kind of stagnating. Alexander is... They've built their first spaceport, so he is working towards the Earth satellite. We'll have to keep an eye on him as a science victor, technically. Or not technically, literally, we'll have to keep it on him as a uh, as a science victor. Let's see, infantry is probably a good idea. Let's let's go ahead and start thinking very seriously about what other units will need to be armied up. Uh, we probably need an additional bombard uh, so that we can have bombard armies. Are we still okay? We are officially no longer getting our gold per turn from Khmer, so the only thing we're waiting for is to have armies. So we need to save up. We need to build as many units as we can to get those armies ready. So that we can charge in as rapidly as possible. Archaeologist in Kish. It's going to take a while to build, but... Um, oh, wow. Production focus doesn't even help you. You have no production tiles, do you? It's weird. Alright, so this Domre has... I don't think anywhere to go at the moment but it will. It totally will. Also, hang on, do I have a couple of warrior monks? I have this warrior monk that's not a part of any particular army, but I don't have another one. Okay, so I'm going to need an additional warrior monk, or I need to wait until that one can army up, because right now it's just a core. All right, so this Domre can... Whoa, no, game! The drag select didn't stop at that point, so when I moved the mouse, it moved what I was pointing to. I was going to move that guy there, but Civ 6 is misbehaving a little bit at the moment, and I'm not sure why. 
I'll look into it between recordings. All right, so... So that Dom Ray is going to be a few turns out, but that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to be at war before he's in position, so... All right, let's see if we can pick a fight with this Apostle. Come on, you know you just want to kill my missionaries now that I'm in your territory. You know you just want to kill them. And again, I want my missionaries to die because they'll give me relics when they die. Yeah, really not sure what's going on with the frame rate. Macedon's trading with Sumeria. Again, it's only been since the, the fall update, so pretty sure it's game related. Good! Yes! Attack the missionaries. Kill the missionaries. Kill all three of them so that I can have three relics. It's totally what, what I want I like you to do. about cities is that everything is king size. The beauty and the ugliness. Okay, so we're getting 100% culture from Theater Square District buildings. That's still pretty handy at the moment, I think. Plus one movement if starting turn in friendly territory. Military academies and seaports generate plus one science. Hmm. No, we need the unit upgrades discount still. Yeah, we need pretty much all of these. Industrial, modern, air, mailing, right? Yeah, we need all of them. These are the policies we need to have right now. As much as this science boost would be nice, because we have military academies, we have plenty of them. I'm going to wait until maybe I have more. That wonder building boost could be good, though. I'm going to hold off for now, but we'll see what other options I might have. I can train a naturalist and get a natural park going. That'll help with tourism. Uh, the only thing is that it'll cost faith to do that. Is there anyone that I sincerely... All right, we're actually about to get a great general, which is nice. And a great artist, which I already knew about. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and buy the naturalist. Let's do that. Because that's going to help us ensure that no one... Ensure that we are competitive on the culture victory front as well. Which I don't want a culture victory, but I want to be competitive. Definitely. So I could build an encampment here and help with production in this city. And I feel like that might be a good idea. Um, yeah. Let's put you there. Take you off of... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to keep you on food focus. And then this Domre, again, just hang out. Mobilization is six turns away. Because we already have three core, so thankfully we got the boost towards that. That's pretty nice. I can't attack with religious units, unfortunately. So we're just going to keep these guys here. And uh, let the... <laughs> Let that apostle deal with them on his own, which he appears to be trying to do. Okay, so this is our new trader, I think, that just finished here. We set them up not too long ago. Let's have them trade with Nagara Jayasri, which will help with production and food uh, in uh, Chaturmuka, right? It actually does help with the encampment and the uh, growth of the city, so that's a welcome sight to see. Now, I said that I really wanted to help the city grow quickly. I think one of the best things to do that um, would be... One of the best ways to do that would be training these bananas, or improving these bananas with a plantation. So we'll do that. Almost to turn 300. Hard to believe. I've been playing this campaign for a while. It's been a good one, too. A little bit intense in the beginning, but it's a learning experience. If you're just watching for the first time, um, or maybe missed my talking about it in the very beginning, I don't typically play on Emperor difficulty. My my sweet spot for Civ tends to be kink. Um, I, I like the idea of playing... With, with, a, with a challenge, with a higher challenge, but I also like the idea of relaxing a little bit and not having too many nonsensical AI bonuses, and King is that sweet spot for me. So Emperor, this this series is definitely on Emperor, and um, it's a little bit of a, a different experience for me overall. Nagata Jasri has finished their archaeologist. That's good. Let's go ahead and get another artifact right now. And then what else can you do? You can purchase a Prasat... But I think I would rather build something else here. In a couple of turns, we could buy another builder. And we could have an industrial zone going in the meantime. 
We could also build an encampment, which will help us get more great general points. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put an encampment out in the desert where it's not hurting any production from other tiles. Always a good thing to do. I don't want the Pagoda in Sheffield, but I'm okay with the Military Academy, I think. Especially because there's a policy that we were just looking at a second ago that will actually help us a great deal once we have it ready. Oh, and there's cotton. Do we have cotton already? I think we do. Yeah, we do. We have several cotton, so we're fine. We don't need more of that. But I will get a shipyard going there. Choose artifact. Uh, let's make it a Congo artifact, just to rub it in his face. Got some earrings! Renaissance artifact. Founded 1948 AD. That's nice. Frame rate, what are you doing? Sorry, I'll stop commenting on it, but it's it's bothering me. And some people are sensitive to frame rate, some aren't. But I, I can tell. And, and where did your apostle go? Why are you no longer attacking my religious units that are attacking you? Oh, there's your apostle. Hang on. Let's make this a little bit more obvious for you. You know you want to. Just go ahead and kill it. It's unusual that he stopped when he had the opportunity. Okay, so this is our naturalist, and we can get a... Um, I think I'd rather have the natural park, the national park there. Knowledge of radio has advanced considerably. Very nice. So if you want to see again what that did for us... Greatly enhances tourism and amenities. National parks are designated by naturalist units, which may be purchased in your city with faith after researching the conservation civic. National parks can be built on a cluster of any four tiles that meet the following requirements. A national park's tourism output is equal to the total appeal of all the tiles included in the park. Additionally, the city that owns the park receives two amenities, and the four closest tiles in your civilization receive one amenity. So, pretty nice bonuses, right? Let's also take a look at the appeal of these tiles. All breathtaking. So pretty nice tourism output there from that national park, considering where we put it. We put it on the Dead Sea, so not bad. Not bad at all. All right, this Dom Ray, we're just waiting for mobilization so that we can army up a number of our units. We're getting close, and then we'll be ready to go to war with Congo, and that's going to be one hell of a fight, because they're still more advanced than us in some key ways. Like, for instance, I see uh, mechanized infantry right there, but that's not an army. It's not. Okay, you attacked another missionary, but not the one that could have died. What are, what exactly are you doing? Kill the units. Maybe he knows... Maybe he's trolling me. Maybe he knows that if those units die, I'll get a relic. And he's just teasing me. The AI's not that smart. I'm kidding, but... That could be an explanation. Okay. Hmm... <laughs> we're able to harbor here in this tile. And believe it or not, it would be... You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. It's weird. Um, it's a lake harbor, but it it's a good spot for a harbor. So we're gonna go with it. It's weird, but that's what we're gonna do. I'm saving up for that builder, so I'm not gonna spend any gold. Let's see. Probably benefit from building a builder up here. Let's do that. Improve some more stuff around that... Uh, Around that city, for sure. Yep, Dom Ray can just hang out. Missionaries definitely hang out. That's what I've been wanting you to do forever. And then these guys, I guess I'll bring the, the, the caravel down here to see if we can uncover any more of the fog before we're done here. All right, this archaeologist is still not done. Excavate artifact. Choose. Uh, let's make this... Oh, good. Congo artifact. Fresco. So we're stealing a lot of Congo's artifacts, which just makes me so happy. All right, there's that uh, plantation. And let's go to the next turn, and we should have enough money, I think, maybe, to buy a builder? Hopefully. I think it's 720 or 740. If it's 740, we're going to be right on the money. Yes! Kill the missionary. Give me relics. Ha 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 ha. You fool. You fool, you've fallen into my trap. Yeah, yeah. Germany sees what I'm doing. <laughs> no, they're mad because we have different government types. So we have the Gunderstrup Cauldron. And he's about to kill another missionary, and we have another one right nearby. So, uh, let's ignore the spy request. And it looks like we lost our spy. That we actually, the, our great work, our, our cat burglar was captured. 
Even though chances were low that that would happen, our cat burglar was captured. That is a real shame. Um, hey, Congo. Any chance I can get that cat burglar back before I declare war on you? By chance? Um, but what, what, what would you want? 37 gold per turn for 30 turns, huh? Well, um, tell you what. Deal. Because I'm about to declare war on you, so it doesn't matter. I'll take that. This is one of the cheapest things I've ever done to the AI in Civ 6. <laughs> uh, let's establish an embassy here. Yeah. How about we do an embassy with Sumer? Oh, not interested. Okay. And of course, civilizations that have denounced us, we cannot do that with. Okay. Well, um, I think because I spent that gold on the embassy, though, I can't buy the builder, can I? Yep, I spent that 50 gold. So we're going to have to wait till the next turn and the next episode to get that builder going. And we are almost certainly... I would be shocked if we did not, but let's go ahead and get this artifact while I'm looking at it. But um, I'd be shocked if we did not, but we are going to be going to war with Congo in the next episode because we are three turns away from mobilization, which will let us um, army up a lot of our units. And then it's a matter just of charging in and doing as much damage as possible. A lot of his units are not that advanced yet, and um, we just took our spy back very cheaply, and we can use that to our advantage as well after we finish the war. We're not necessarily going to conquer all of Congo. We're just going to take most of his advantage away as quickly as we can. And then see if we can go for that religious victory like was the original plan. Thanks, Victoria. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at noon Eastern time, along with the rest of my historical and grand strategy content. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.